today's tutorial, we're going to go over five methods for optimizing the performance of ray traced reflections in Unreal. First of all, we're going to talk about uh, material optimization or creating special materials that are designed specifically to be viewed in reflections. Then we're going to talk about roughness accumulation, which is adding up the roughness as the reflection rays bounce around. Then we'll talk about max ray distance, which is a method for limiting the distance that the reflection rays can uh, be sent out. And this uh, improves performance by limiting the number of objects that are tested for reflections. Then we're going to talk about screen percentage, which is a way of uh, reducing the cost overall of reflections. And then we're going to talk about hybrid SSR, which is a way of mixing reflections uh, between ray tracing and screen space ray tracing. And if you stick around for the end, we're going to add one additional method, not for improving performance, but actually for improving the appearance of the reflections and making everything look better. So five ways of optimizing uh, reflections in Unreal. Let's get started. All right, so here we are in Unreal in our subway car test scene. And we have our reflection spheres here at the end of the car. And I'm just going to zoom in here to these spheres so we can take a look at our current ray traced reflections. You can see that uh, we're getting a frame rate right now of about 20 frames a second, which is a pretty terrible performance. And so what we're going to be doing today is optimizing uh, this 20 frames a second here to try and improve this. Now I will point out before we get started that I do have max bounces set to two. So if you wanted to get some good performance gains right away, you could turn this down to one. But if I do turn this to one right now, you'll notice that I've got these big black splotches and I'm kind of trying to avoid that. So I'm going to set my max bounces to two and we're going to go ahead and try to improve our performance and get it higher than 19 or 20 frames a second. All right, so the first optimization that we're gonna look at is material optimization. And so what I wanna do is my scene is filled with materials and when I render the reflections, when we do ray tracing, I want to create simpler versions of these materials so that the reflections are cheaper to render. So let's switch over to our master material, our base material here. This is the material that all of the material instances in this scene are based on. And so here we are in this material. You can see I've got uh, various portions of the material that do normals, emissive, uh, all the different material features. Here's my roughness and my diffuse color up here. And what I want to do is kind of focus right here on this section. You'll see that I've added four nodes called Ray Tracing Quality Switch Replace. And what these nodes do is I can wire something into the normal socket. And by the way, uh, normal is kind of a bad name here because it doesn't mean like a normal, like a normal map. It means like regular standard. So I'm going to wire my uh, value into the normal socket or the standard value. And then I have this alternate value that I can wire in for the material that is used uh, for a ray traced reflection. So let's just go over one example here. So this switch here is for uh, the metallic values. And you can see that I'm calculating my metallic values over here in this portion of the shader. And those values are coming over here and going right into the metallic socket, the input on my material. Well, what I can do instead is wire my metallic into the normal socket on my ray traced quality switch replace. And then I'll just set it to a hard coded zero for when it's ray traced. So anything that uh, any metallic values in the re ray traced reflections just become zero. Now I'm going to wire this into my metallic. So when the materials are not ray traced, they're just going to pass right through from normal to out to metallic. But when they're rendered into reflections, instead of doing, uh, you know, all of this portion of the graph, my values are just going to be zero. All right, let's do the same thing with these others. Here's roughness. 
So I have my roughness coming into the normal socket of ray tracing quality switch replace. And I'm just setting everything to a, va a roughness value of one when they're uh, ray trace materials. And I'm gonna connect that up here. Same thing for normals. So uh, my normals are just gonna be flat. So I'm wiring this uh, flat normal blue color into the ray trace socket and just the regular normal map normal into the normal socket here. So I'm gonna wire this up to the normal socket. And then for AO, I'm just setting it to a value of one when we're ray tracing and otherwise the standard AO. So I'm gonna wire that into here. And I'm also gonna wire my AO into this multiply here. Uh, we're multiplying the AO by 0 0.5 for our specular value. And with that, I'm done. I've got all of my uh, ray tracing quality switch replaces hooked up so that in reflections, my material is vastly simplified. I am still doing the standard base color, um, but for everything else, I'm just using hard-coded values of zero, one, or one. And this is gonna make my material quite a bit more simple, and uh, hopefully it'll make my reflections uh, cheaper to render. So let's go ahead and save this. Before we do, I'm gonna jump over here and just take a look here again. Our FPS is right now at a value of 20. And so I'm gonna save this. And it's gonna take a while to compile, and then we'll jump back and see if it helped our frame rate to improve. So you can see it's compiling shaders here. I'm not gonna make you wait, I'll just cut away and come back. All right, so here we are back in our scene, and you can see that Oh, our frame rate has actually gone down a little bit. So we had 20 frames a second before, and now we have 16. I'm not really sure why that is, because we're rendering simple, uh, more simple materials into our reflections. Um, but this is something that you'll have to test in your scene. It's gonna be different uh, depending on the camera angles and uh, what your scene setup is like. But we do have uh, more optimized materials for our reflections now. So let's go ahead and move on to the next optimization. The next thing that we're gonna do is use a console command. And this console command is, I'm just gonna paste it down here, r.raytracing.reflections.testpathroughness. And for each of these com console commands that we're gonna talk about, I'll go ahead and put those in the description so that you can copy and paste them yourself if you'd like to. I wanna talk briefly about what this is gonna do what this is doing is it's gonna take for, for uh, rendering reflections, uh, when the ray hits a surface, it's gonna take the roughness and add it to the roughness of whatever surface it hit before. And so the roughness will accumulate as there are more bounces. And the nice thing about that is we have this max roughness cutoff here. So anything with a roughness of higher than 0.2 is not going to do ray traced reflections. So if our roughness accumulates, the likelihood that it's gonna get higher than 0.2 is pretty high, which means it's gonna stop ray tracing at that point. So this is a really nice optimization uh, when you have bounces higher than one, um, because it's like an early out or a cutoff where you can stop ray tracing uh, when roughness accumulates to a value that's higher than your max roughness here. So I'm just gonna turn this on, keeping in mind our current frame rate is 16 frames a second. And when we set our uh, roughness to one, wow, look at that. We just jumped up from 16 frames a second to 50 frames a second. That is a huge boost. Uh, super big performance win. Uh, so we're uh, not doing additional bounces once our roughness passes a max roughness of 0.2. And it looks like that was the case for uh, a really high percentage of the pixels on the screen here. So we were able to avoid doing more work than we needed to. So great win for optimization. The next optimization we're gonna look at is uh, another console command, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this one again. This one is r.raytracing.reflections. 
dot max ray distance. And in our case, we're setting the value to 500, which means our reflection rays are not allowed to go further than five meters uh, from their source pixel. And the reason that this is an optimization is uh, when I send an array out into the scene, it has to be tested against all of the objects in the scene. And there is a bounding volume hierarchy to optimize these tests, but it is quite a bit of work actually to, to test against all of those things. So if I tell the ray that it can't be any longer than five meters, it's going to uh, limit the number of objects that have to be tested against that ray to see if it hit. And so we could potentially get some performance optimization. So I'm just gonna hit enter. Our current frame rate is about 50 FPS. And when we put this optimization into place, uh, looks like it didn't really go up much at all. Let's see what happens if we, uh, if we set this to something really low. So I'm just gonna repeat this again uh, with a value of 50. So in this case, we're only going half a meter. And you can see our, ref our reflex reflections changed significantly and our frame rate jumped up to about 62 FPS. Now we probably don't wanna put something in place that's so drastic uh, because this is just really gonna kill our ray tracing effects. So I'm gonna come back here and we'll set this back to 500 and stick with a frame rate of about 50. All right, let's move on to the next optimization. And this is r.raytracing.reflections.screen percentage 50. And what this is doing is it's gonna render our reflections at half resolution. So right now uh, I'm on a 4K monitor and this is a pretty good percentage of that screen. So we're rendering reflections at really high resolution. Well, if I render uh, at half of this resolution, that's gonna be a significant saving so for us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter. Our current frame rate is about 50, 51 frames a second. And I'm gonna hit enter here. And you can see that now we've jumped up to a frame rate of 70. So our reflections are rendering at half resolution. And we're zoomed in all the way on these uh, chrome spheres here. Um, and we're taking a really close look at them, but you probably couldn't even tell the difference if you were pulled back a little bit further. Now I will mention that uh, one of the artifacts of this particular optimization is that you get a lot of jiggle in the reflections. I don't know if this is gonna come through on YouTube, um, but I don't. But the pixels here are, are wiggling quite a bit. And so if this is an artifact that's uh, unacceptable to you, maybe you can skip this optimization. But if you really need the performance, uh, this is something that you can definitely do. All right, we have one more optimization to, to do. And this is our hybrid approach. So this console command is r.raytracing.reflections.hybrid, and we're gonna turn it on. Now what this does is any ray traced reflection that could be done with an screen space reflection instead, it's gonna do that. So this is a hybrid mix between SSR and real ray traced reflections. And the advantage of doing this is any pixel that works correctly with SSR, uh, SSR is significantly cheaper. So if we can render our scene with SSR, it's better to do it that way. So we're at about 69, 70 FPS now, and I'm gonna turn this on. And now we're getting 72, 73. Um, so that is a pretty good performance win. Now, if you do this hybrid method, uh, instead of some of the other methods, you can get even more of a performance win. Um, but for now, we've jumped up about three FPS, which is, which is a pretty decent savings. So we've gone from less than 20 frames a second up to uh, a performance of 73 frames a second uh, just by adding a few uh, console commands and wow, what a difference in performance that makes. It pretty much makes our, it takes our game from unplayable and not being able to use ray trace reflections all the way up to something that's completely within reach, which is 
uh, absolutely cool. And now I promised you I'd, I'd show you one more cool technique for reflections. And this was this one is not necessarily a performance optimization, but a way to make reflections look better. In order to do this technique, I'm going to turn the hybrid method off. So we're doing pure ray traced reflections. And one of the problems with some of the performance optimizations that we've done so far is that uh, it introduces some black areas to our reflections. We have this spot right here, and this is caused by our reflections not having enough bounces. Um, we've limited our bounces to two, and so I get a when I'm trying to render a reflection of a reflection of a reflection, I get this empty black spot where no reflections are allowed, so it can't continue to reflect. And I could fix this by turning up my bounces. So right now my bounces are at two. If I went, if I set this to something like eight, then I would get proper reflections here. Um, but this is gonna hurt my performance quite a bit. And so I wanna keep that at two or lower if I can. But what I really wanna do is, if I get to a spot where I can't bounce my reflections anymore, I want to fill that in with cube map reflections instead. And so that's where this last feature comes in that we're going to talk about. This is another console command, and it's called r.raytracing.reflections.reflectioncaptures1. And so what this is going to do is anywhere where I'm unable to ray trace the reflections, uh, for whatever reason, maybe max distance or uh, the number of bounces being limited, this is going to fill in that empty space with uh, reflections from my cube map reflections instead. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Uh, my current frame rate is about 68 or around 70-ish. And when I turn it on, you can see that my reflection uh, visuals have improved significantly and my performance hasn't dropped at all. So this is really cool. It allows me to cut down on the number of bounces but without leaving uh, large dark black areas where those reflections uh, uh, would need to be filled in. All right, so let's back up here and take a look at our scene. So you can see that we haven't lost much visual quality at all, uh, but our frame rate has gone up dramatically. So before when we were down to about 20 in an area just filled with reflections, uh, we're at 50, uh, sometimes 60 FPS now, and this is just an awesome performance improvement. So like I said, I'll put the console commands in the description down below, and you can take a look at those and use them in your scene, and hopefully it'll allow you to go from a place where perhaps ray tracing wasn't possible to do in your game, um, but now you can actually turn it on because the performance is significantly improved uh, with these five techniques. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and uh, come back next week for more ray tracing goodness. And we'll see you next week, everybody.